Welcome back to Learning with Cases. In the previous modules, we talked about the benefits of learning with cases and why we learn with cases. We also talked about the three stages in the case method process, and we went on to review the short cycle and the long cycle individual preparation. In this module, we're going to take a closer look at developing our definition of success. The definition of success is a key element in the case process. If we don't properly define the outcome we're trying to achieve, we will not be effective in solving the case. When stating our definition of success, we use a standard format. We start off by stating, in order for the organization to succeed, and we conclude our definition of success by indicating they must address the following critical issues. Our focus for this tutorial is developing a proper definition of success. We will look at identifying critical issues in an upcoming tutorial. In these tutorials, we've been looking at the Cineplex Entertainment case. So our definition of success would look something like this. In order for Cineplex Entertainment to succeed, Sarah Lethwaite must address the following. Now, it's important to note that it's not enough to simply say succeed. We must define what success looks like. In order to define success, we want to think about the long term. If Sarah were sitting back in her office or presenting to the board of directors three years or five years or ten years from now, what would success look like? If she were to sit back and pat herself on the back five years from now for a job well done, what would that look like? From your short cycle skim read of the case, you would likely have identified stabilizing revenues as an important success measure because Sarah's boss, the chief executive officer of Cineplex Entertainment, identified increasing and stabilizing revenues as a key objective. In your detailed read of the case and your analysis of the exhibits related to revenues and profits, however, you would likely have noticed that revenues over the past three years have indeed been stable and growing. Where we seem to be challenged, however, is in our gross profit. So keeping in mind that gross profit may indeed be our key success measure, we want to take a look at developing our definition of success. When developing our definition of success, we want to make the statement as smart as possible. It's important to make our definition of success as specific and measurable as possible. This will allow us to determine whether or not we've actually achieved the objective. If it's not specific and it's not measurable, how do we know if we've attained it? In looking at our definition of success, it must also be something that we can take action on or something that we can do something about in order to move us towards that objective. If there's nothing we can do to lead us to this objective, then it's out of our control and no plan we develop will lead us to success. We also want to make sure that the definition of success is realistic, that it's something achievable. This will help to ensure that everyone will be on board and motivated to pursue the objective. And finally, it must be time-bounded in that we should have a time frame in which we expect to achieve this definition of success. Ensuring that our definition of success is smart is not enough. We also need to be careful to ensure that our definition of success is truly moving us forward. For the Cineplex Entertainment case, for example, if we set the definition of success to increase gross profit per guest to $2.25 per guest over the next five years, we might agree that this is smart, but is it truly moving us forward? In this case, for example, it might be possible to increase our gross profit per guest to $2.20 from the current $1.70, but could we really sit back five years from now and congratulate ourselves on a, on a job well done? If, for example, we manage to increase our gross profit per guest, but see an overall reduction in our guests, it's possible that our overall revenues and profits would decline. Would we consider that to be a success? Similarly, if we simply look at improving our gross profit margin from the current 14% to a target of, say, 25%, would we be able to consider that success? Again, it's possible to improve our gross profit but lose total guest visits, thus resulting in a reduction in our overall profit dollars. Would we consider that a success? So when we look at our definition of success, we want to ensure that it's looking longer term, that it's smart, and that it's moving us forward as an organization. In this particular case, there are a number of different ways in which we can do that. 
at the end of our analysis, we may define our success as increasing gross profits from movie operations to $190 million over the next five years. This is not the only possible definition of success for this particular case. Rather, it's merely one potential definition that meets our criteria of being smart and moving the organization forward. It also is important to note here that when you state your definition of success, you must be sure to support your objective by providing the rationale and logic that you used in developing it. In this case, for example, I would include a table in my exhibits showing the previous trends in terms of revenues and gross profits, along with my forecast for the next five years. That brings us to the end of Module 3, Developing the Definition of Success. In upcoming tutorials, we'll take a closer look at identifying critical issues, developing alternatives and decision criteria, as well as developing our recommendations and action plan.